Well, if you're still watching, it's Plus Politics, and we're t talking about uh, dealing with the issue of insecurity in Nigeria as we count down to the elections come 23 and 23. What should we be considering and what should be front and center as we draw, draw, and come uh, face to face with these politicians? Well, uh, discussing with me tonight, Reverend Joseph Hayab, who's the chairman, Christian Association of Nigeria, Kaduna State, Dennis Amakri, former assistant director of the DSS, and Senator Irobu, who is editor in chief of global sentinel and a security analyst senator before i went on that break i wanted to talk about security reporting so i'll pose the next question to you severally um politicians and government officials have pointed fingers at uh, the media for um either the fact that they're not properly reporting the statistics are not factual uh, or uh, you know the media is pointing uh, fingers at security agencies about them not being open and giving us the right statistics, hence the loophole. How well do you think that the media has fared in terms of reporting on, on terrorism, insecurity and the likes? And, and what do you think the major challenge of the average journalist in Nigeria is when it comes to reporting on these issues? Senator, can you hear me? Oh, sorry. Uh, it was muted before. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, I, I may be... Uh, uh, I don't know if you say I'm, I'm biased because I'm from that sector, but I want to say that um, Nigerian media have been reporting well when it comes to the issue of insecurity every, um, and the general governance issues. Uh, Nigerian media is one of the most uh, proactive and vibrant. I've been to other West African or African countries and compared their media and Nigeria's. I think they are doing veritable well. But it doesn't mean that there are not challenges or uh, one way or the other where we are, uh, there are lapses. Uh, we should do more. Um, there are some aspects where we should hold uh, the government more accountable, but I think we are doing that. Then there are challenges. Uh, first of all, we must understand the media role. You know, the media role according to uh, 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 Section Two, you know, of the 1999 Constitution, is to hold Chapter Two, Section 22 of 1999 Constitution, is to uphold the responsibility and accountability of government to the people, you know, shall play a watchdog role. So, and Nigerian media have been doing that. But sometimes government feel that um, uh, we are over reporting some of the activities or exposing some of the ills to the detriment of uh, national security. And again, hyping the, uh, the atrocities of terrorists. But sometimes these are issue we call catch 22. For example, yes, sometimes this report, because terrorists, they thrive in media hype and media reportage. But sometimes, if case you keep quiet, if people continuous, uh, continuously getting killed and you don't report it, and you find that government is not doing anything about it. Or, for example, if there's a danger, or when security agencies or government will say, ah, this place in Bono local government is now safe. Um, the citizen should go back and a journalist you know that that place is not really safe and you say okay for the sake that you don't want to hype that the terrorists are still operating in that area you keep quiet and people go there and die you've not done your job as a journalist so you cannot for the sake of okay i, I don't want to promote the activities of, of uh, terrorists and keep quiet you know, and create more state of insecurity for or danger, state of danger for the citizen. So it's a dilemma for media practitioners. So it's always challenging. Then the issue of uh, citizen journalism, the social media. You know, sometimes people confuse it with uh, professional uh, journalism. These days, even if uh, as a media practitioner you see some things you don't, you know, you, you want to fact check. Before you know it, someone who is not even a journalist have used his video, taken video, snapped, and posted it without in any form of, uh, you know, um, checks and balances or fact checking, and post it over there, and uh, they will come and blame it to the media. These are some of the challenges, and um, this issue of um, for security, 
Yes, because of the nature of their job, sometimes they work to, you know, filter information before it's thrown out to the public and passing through the right channel. So that's their job. And the media job is also to get information properly. What is the essence of that information? The information should be able to hold government accountable. It should be able, it should be for public good and interest. Mm -hmm. And it should be able to enhance governance. But, but, but there are politicians who, but there are politicians and government officials who have come out to say that half the time the media has tried to, um, you know, pit the people against the government in issues of insecurity uh, and, and same for security agencies that you're over sensationalizing, uh, you know, are being overly sentimental on some of these issues and, uh, and when you report them. Okay, first, first, if government is doing something good or something well, I don't think they should be afraid of what the media, because media write what they see. That's one. Uh, there is, is a humorous statement, but there was a, a time, there was this video that trended. Uh, the current governor of um, Kaduna State, Erofi, he people were asking, why are you so critical of Jonathan government, even when he achieved this, achieved this? He said, look, it's not his job to come and start uh, laundering the image of government as an opposition member. His role is to point out what government did not do. And even the one they do, they did. He saw it to even say they did not do it to the maximum, to the capacity. That's the job of opposition. The job of the media is not to do PR for government officials. It's to hold them accountable. I said, look, you've not done this, you've not done that. And for example, look at the continuous killing in Kaduna State. Secondly, media as a journalist, you're also a human being. You're also most... Journalists are also members of that society, a citizen of that community, of the country. And you see what is going on. See the killings. You see the barrier. And you see nothing is being done. Mm -hmm. And those terrorists have the audacity to come again and kill. No statement from government, no action from the government. And you say the media should keep quiet. I don't think even if the media, like, look, like uh, the clergy have said, what is being reported, in fact, what media are reporting is not up to, let's say, 40% of what is going on. Because there are killings. I happened to, I just came, I came before Christmas, I came back from Kano. There was this um, dialogue and media trend, ECOWAS is having with, um, uh, 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 this, uh, some political representative. And there's this guy from Kasena. He was shedding tears. He was even a, 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 a governorship candidate of a political party. Of how they are so vulnerable that they are constant daily killings every day in Kassina State. And this is the state of the present. If if you listen to him, you you, you can't help the whip. But I can't start coming out to write it. There are many things media as a professional, I'm not talking about citizen journalists, the uh, ordinary who, social media who put There are many things that most journalists were aware of, but because of the way we are not. So if the few we are writing and the, uh, the politicians are complaining, are they doing their job? Mm. People Are people dying? People are dying. Are some communities sacked? They are sacked. Are there a lot of ungoverned spaces? There are. Are there... Uh, Spread of insecurity, the worsening of persisting. They are right. So, if all these things you fact check it, they are true. You don't care whether it makes a uh, uh, politician uncomfortable. That's why you are there. That's why you are elected, and that's why you are taken care of, and that's why you are, you are given plethora of SAs, PAs, ministers, this and that. Hmm. And you are paid by state fund to do your job. And if you are not doing it, it's the job of a journalist to point it out that you are not doing it. And if you, if you cannot handle it, you step aside and allow others who can to be elected and do the job. Okay. Um, uh, may I say something about this? May I say something about this, please? Please, yes. Uh, quickly. Yes. Uh, now, I think uh, I can understand what, uh, where Senator is coming from. But um, you see... It is not an antagonistic relationship, you know, especially in a democracy. 
what we are trying to do, remember one thing, the objective of a terrorist is to go ahead and gain publicity. Now, a Nigerian journalist will not even listen to security agencies to find out how many soldiers were killed or, you know, how they are managing that situation. Then you go to press because you want to be the first to break the news. And I think that relationship has been spoiled already because they are supposed look we have a national interest to protect and the journalists can also oh uh, it is my constitutional responsibility you know to expose what government is doing no i think it's a symbiotic relationship where the military uh defense headquarters even the dss you know, before, we, uh, they don't used to have a, a spokesman. Now they have a spokesman. You know, police have a very high-profile spokesman. Why can't journalists go talk to these people before they run down there and start, you know, say, oh, 20 people. Remember, uh, maybe Reverend Hyatt Hire, Hire has uh, about 20 people there. They just called him, you know. And then, of course, before you can even verify, what pressman has published it, uh, uh, 20 people are dead. What effect do you think it gives to those people in those communities? So I think we all need to look at ourselves again and then, of course, try to... Re we are not competing. We are for the same country. I know that some politicians can be very funny, but... Let us work together. That's what I'm saying. I do. I don't understand you, but I'm curious because I have had. I've seen myself in situations where security agencies are hardly want to give you any information. They're tight-lipped, and half the time, even the information that you have is not good enough to run with. And you know, sometimes, sometimes you even have the facts. You have these facts. You have facts on the ground. You were there. Correct. But then security but agencies. I, are I understand what you're saying about national. You know, national for the, the you know the purpose of keeping you know everybody together and not you know um, sensationalizing the issue. But if there's a tight-lipped situation around security agencies, what's the journalist supposed to do? I'm not in support of any tight-lipped or fake news. Because we have a minister of information who will come there and tell you the opposite of what actually happened. I don't think that's the way to manage information. Risk communication is a very, very serious issue whereby you take the risk and, of course, know how to disseminate it to public. You know, you, know, you have to think of so many variables. It is not a matter of, I want to do my job or I want to you know, be the first. You know, but you should be able to consider certain things, and that is national security. Okay. And there should be a regular meeting, regular meeting with the security agencies and the press, you know, because if you want freedom of information, good governance, the rule of law, these three very important areas, then you have to work together. Okay. You cannot work independently. Okay. Can, I, can, I, can I make can I make uh, <laughs> okay I'll give you I'll give you one minute quickly go ahead yeah, yes I, I know if, if this particular issue now even if we discuss it one hour we may not have all the time but what I, I want to, uh, uh, dr March I'm not talking no actually it's not being uh, antagonistic and no professional journalists will report operational issues of the military or security agency that will put the life of security agents in danger. Right. This is not yes. what I'm saying. What I'm saying is reporting issues that are of public interest. For example, you see there's issue of corruption that will even affect both the personnel or the operational capacity of the security agency. It's okay, I will not report it because it affects one or the Or there is a danger that will affect the citizens or community if you do not want them ahead. And it's okay, I'm not going to know. And um, most, sometimes the professional journalists and the military or the security agency, they interface. There are some things they tell us in confidence. We don't go about reporting it. And also what you don't understand is that 
in 24 hour information circulation if you don't if like uh, Marianne have noted if this institution security agencies don't put up out correct inform official information on time there are citizen journalists who will break it on their own on Facebook on Twitter that's what I pointed out and it doesn't mean that even if a professional journalist don't write it or waiting for they will post it they'll post the, they'll post the videos and that's why I find out that most of these spokespersons they are not being proactive sometimes you read that they are yeah. waiting for four hours to to get information before they know it the citizen journalists the community members who are affected have already posted this thing in the video or uh, in this on the social media so there have to be interface and the 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 the, the proactiveness from the okay. part of the military also all right senator finally i'm gonna let reverend hayab close this off uh 50 INEC offices have been attacked in you know, in the past four years. And in the past few weeks, we've seen back-to-back -back hits, most especially in the Southeast, burning down, destroying. Recently also, we saw how the U.S. Um, government had withdrawn some of their um, people. In fact, they were the first to sound the alarm about some terrorist, um, um, you know, threat in, in Abuja. And we saw how the government... Mm -hmm. Um, responded to it and, and how they were more confrontational as opposed to uh, proactive. Whilst we are getting ready for the elections, like I always say, politicians will promise us heaven and earth. They will tell us all the things that we want to hear. But what should be the position of the average Nigerian when we're listening to these people? And if we have an opportunity to parlay with them, what should be front and center in terms of insecurity? Let me put it this way. Those who are going around burning and destroying INEC properties, as far as I'm concerned, I look at them as criminals, and the law of Nigeria should not allow them to go scot free. There is no reason why, as we are approaching the election, then some characters will be going to INEC facility and be burning to them. If you really want a change in Nigeria, destroying INEC property will not bring the change. If you are not happy with the way things are in Nigeria, destroying island property will not change or correct that. So you have to find a better civil way of expressing your anger than doing that. But because they also take advantage of the weakness of our security system, where arresting them is always not easy. And even if they are arrested tomorrow, they will find their way out or the whole story will be twisted as if they were not actually the one who committed the crime. That's why they are doing that. So I feel really disappointed that at this time that we are crying that things are not going well and we have an opportunity to correct it through the ballot and we are now the same people or some characters among us are going about destroying any property that is wrong. But I want to encourage every Nigerian to support the security agencies and ensure that whatever you see, say it out or expose it and don't allow evil people to continue to have a freely day. When if people come to your community and cause problems, and you think it does not matter, it's going to affect you tomorrow. Don't forget that the money they are going to use in replacing everything that they've ever destroyed is going to be the same money that's supposed to be used in building and developing the society. So everybody should be part of this effort of securing Nigeria. And that's where those in power have a lot of problems. It seems not to want this, uh, other Nigerians to be involved in contributing to security matters. As far as they are concerned, they are the governors, they are the ones in the authority, they know everything. And what they are claiming to, that they know, we've not seen any, any fruit. If you have tried something once, you try it twice, you try it the third time, and there's no result, why don't you also listen to other voices? Why don't you give other people the opportunity to hear their view and also to try what they are bringing to the table? Until we see this country as our country, until those in authority see us as part of the stakeholders that will solve Nigerian problem, we continue to be in this cycle of problem every day. But I will not just speak without saying something about the media uh, relationship and the reporting of security matters. The experience we have in Kaduna is because so many media groups seem not to be paying salary. Some journalists find this security reporting as another way of getting food. Either they write it in support of government or write it in support of other interests. If we don't correct that, then the way we report security matters will continue to be a serious problem. Because if you want to report a killing and you are treating the facts and you are not presenting the story the way it is, 
you are also helping to stir up a new problem in that same community. So journalists have really not, they've been doing well, but I must confess that some of them have not done well. In Kaduna, some of us have stopped watching certain medias now because we feel their reporting is biased, their reporting is inhuman, their reporting do not care about what happened as long as they are going to get some envelope from those in power. Here the people are making mistakes, here the people are not caring about the lives of citizens, but they want to protect those people. And the fact is that to their media houses, they've been told that certain groups of people in Kaduna must never be interviewed. So if there is a story in Kaduna, it must either be what the governor say and no other person say anything contrary. So how can you effect a change when you have such reporting, when you have such people among the media house, uh, reporters? So this is part of the problem that we need to holistically find a way of addressing it. I always said the reason why they do that is because many media houses can no pay salary, and that is the truth. We shouldn't deny that. So some of them have to find a way of eating food, and sadly, they are not reporting it the way it's supposed to be reported. Well, gentlemen, it's been a very, very great conversation tonight, and I'm hoping that Nigerians who are watching are listening, not just hearing your words, but reading a, a, along those lines also to make sure that we do the right thing as we get ready for the polls. Reverend Joseph Hayep is the Chairman, Christian Association of Nigeria, Kaduna State. Dennis Amakari is the former Assistant Director, DSS, and Senator Irobo is the Editor-in-Chief of the Global Sentinel, and he's also a security analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Conversation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. And wish us all. all right. Thank yeah. you all. That, well, that's the show tonight. I am Mary Anakon, but don't forget, go get your PBC and get ready because this is your opportunity to make that change. Don't vote across religious or ethnic lines. Don't vote based on sentiments or how the person looks. Find out if they're right for the country to turn things around. I'm Mary Anakon. Have a great evening.